uh, this is uh, a session on fintech's innovation versus regulations. Will the twain ever meet? Um, I have had asked this question a number of times. Um, so probably let's see if we can uh, have some uh, uh, ideas about where uh, will it ever meet. So uh, the topic is going to be uh, uh, done by uh, Sundar Murthy, uh, who is the general manager for RBI Chennai. And uh, he's worked with RBI for over 26 years in the areas of payment and settlement systems, currency management, and information technology. He's currently the general manager of RBI in Chennai, overseeing the departments of consumer, education, and protection, and enforcement. He has earlier been involved in many technology-driven initiatives in RBI, including various committees set up by the bank. I now welcome Mr. Sundamuthi to deliver this program. So here's how it's going to go. When I was invited to uh, Isaka, and I'm thankful for the fact that they've invited me, I wondered what should I speak here. Of course, I worked extensively on putting in cybersecurity measures in banks, a lot of committees, a lot of stuff. But I realized that possibly you are far more experienced than I am in many, many of these functions. So I thought, for a change, let me talk about something else. Triggering this was also the fact that just before I finalized my topic, there was an article uh, in one of the financial dailies where they had listed regulation risk as one of the top risks that fintechs face. So that's my idea of talking to you about this. Regulation is, is, is there. It's a boring topic. I'll definitely, notwithstanding the coffee you've just had, I'll still put you to sleep. But it's the innovation that really gets us excited, right? You've been talking about AI, you've been talking about technologies, a lot of stuff is happening. But then at the end of the day, you have a nice fancy Ferrari uh, vehicle with a V8 engine, and we say, Baba, 20 kilometers per hour. <laughs> right? You have this fancy 5G phone. We say, boss, only 2G, only data, or if you are in Kashmir, even that's band. So, you know, play as much Candy Crush as you wish. That's all you, that's where you're going. If that ecosystem doesn't exist, that's it. Khalas, right? So, I thought, let's see that what, what is this? And this is an acquisition that we face. So, I'm going to take this head on and possibly, you know, I'll, I'll keep my time uh, short. I will, I'll do this presentation for about half an hour. And then we'll, maybe you can ask me anything about RBI and you can, you know, I'll answer it to the best of my ability. Okay. Uh, cool. So this is what I want to talk about. Uh, so these are my comments and this is the general disclaimer I need to put in. Okay, quickly. You have, I think, some fancy gadgets around your neck. Use it to vote. So this is my option. What do you think the financial sector will look in 20 years from now? Let's do a bit of crystal gazing. Lovely. Thanks for changing that. So you have uh, uh, four options. You have whether there will be only few large banks, you have multiple, this is a multiple choice. Um, banks are irrelevant, other financial sector intermediaries take over. Whether there's an equal share of banks and non-banks and peer-to-peer. -peer. So obviously there are, there are multiple scenarios and even I should actually put a number five saying that, you know, none of the above, you don't know shit about banks. Oh, sorry, I'm supposed to use parliamentary words. So you don't know anything about, <laughs> you, you don't know anything about banks, you don't know anything about the financial sector, this is what I think. That's, so that's option number five. It's not there because I'm a banker, so only four options are available. Choose. Eh? You? Yeah, just what? Oh, man, this is like con banega karodpati. Maximum options, give me one, three, and four. Come on. Okay. 
Uh, so you already seen, uh, so let, let's look at the options again, right? Few large banks, uh, we've seen some mergers, so obviously I know what's driving you and that's why the question is there. Uh, you know, is it a good idea is, is a separate question altogether. The other thing is that, uh, you know, you still think that banks are uh, relevant, which is a good thing, but I'm not sure whether the entire universe agrees with it. If you, if you look at what is the literature, especially those uh, blockchain evangelists say that, you know, this is an extremely inefficient system. So over a period of time, inefficiency dies. And while we take maybe 20 years is still a very reasonable lifetime and so you think banks will exist, but over a period of time, uh, do read the book Curse, uh, Curse of Currency. Uh, no. Okay. Curse of Cash. Uh, the, the book Curse of Cash, how the concept of money itself has evolved. So, you know, we were with uh, minting coins to we are going to somewhere else. Today we are digital. So things can change and they can change fast and we are alive to this. So, I mean, there's a pretty uh, unique kind of uh, distribution here. But it is true that certain aspects of peer-to-peer payment systems are coming off, coming off age, they, they are changing and maybe we will see that happen even more significantly. So uh, there's a fair call. Uh, the second point was obviously uh, was a little bit of an outlier. So many of you have rejected that. Some of you do think that it is, it is, it is a thing that can happen. So it's, it's a fair call, more in keeping with what is happening. But you look at literature, it's possibly not going to, it, it's going to change even more. So what do the, what's the, it's not the world, it's the world around us. What are people saying here? So here is one guy, let me, ah, you recognize this chappy? Kotak, Uday Kotak, one of uh, uh, the, the vice chairman of Kotak Mahindra Bank, which is, which is known to be one of the technological adv uh, uh, advanced companies, uh, banks, where they have won multiple innovation awards. So this guy says that, will I have a bank the next morning or will uh, financial companies uh, be doing this? Brett King, um, who is the fintech head who, who has written Bank 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, has more famously said this. But uh, maybe you know Brett King, maybe you don't know. So I put the more famous guy who's, who, who we as technology people all know, uh, who has said, banking is necessary, banks are not. How true is this? And I want to look at this, are we, how does it matter to technology? Because of technology, this is where we are today. Let's see further what's happening in the news headlines. China's banks lost 22 billion to Alibaba and Tencent, uh, but, and that's not the biggest problem because they are, they are actually gaining on core banking activities. We define banking as acceptance of deposits for the purpose of lending, and this is where uh, the fintechs are hurting them. PSD2, European banking, you might have heard these things, they are happening all around you. Uh, when, when you go, go in for uh, off-site, you, you know when you're going to, into the European Union to do, to do anything in the BFSI sector, PSD2 means open banking. They say that banks can no longer hold on to data. Earlier on, what was happening? What was the key thing that the banks were having? Of course, they have your and my money, that's fine. But more than that, they have the information. And that information, they were holding on to themselves because a, they were lazy. B, the, where will you go? You got my money also with you. So this was a kind of banking and today PSD2, at least in the European Union, has changed it. Today with UPI, we are also on P, PSD2 standards. So today we are, uh, you can, you don't need to have access to my account to transact into my account. What am I saying? You don't, let me repeat this because it's important. You don't need access to my account to transact into my account. You need a UPI ID and you can transfer money in and out, in and out of my account. That's open banking for you where APIs are actually enabling the transactions to happen without you sitting on the data, without you sitting on the money actually. This is happening around, uh, um, this is China seems to be the biggest thing. Uh, this is a uh, this is the European uh, the World Economic Forum the Davos Summit 
people are talking about it across the world and this is what's happening in financial area, sector area. We are no longer, yes, cyber securities are there, but the real things that everybody internationally is talking about is fintech. Uh, you would see comments from the uh, Fed Reserve Chairman, from, from the Chinese uh, People's Bank of China uh, uh, governor, from RBI governor. The Niti Aayog has a fintech conference. There is clearly something that's happening here that needs to be looked at and that's, that's the idea which I'm, I'm going to be looking at. Um, the uh, the uh, FSB say in 2019, banks have only 40% of the assets and something one third of the assets, that is 30% of the assets are held by something called OFI. What is OFI? No rocket science, other financial institutions. This include any entity which is not regular, you will see the other things, pension funds, insurance companies, central banks themselves, they have one third. If you looked at the same figure 10 years ago, the share of OFIs was 17%. In one decade, this entire thing has almost gone up by 80%, from 17 to 30% of the market share today is not by the banks but by other financial institutions and that's making a very significant contribution. You would know in India ourselves when banks stopped lending it was the NBFCs which started lending into the market. So this is this is a phenomena we are all aware of which is all happening right around us. Uh, the BIS which is the central bank of the central banks has raised this issue as that you know, this is, this is a big text. We are no longer talking about uh, too big to fail in the financial industry concept. We are today talking about uh, the big companies which are really big uh, as far as market cap. And you will see that uh, this is JP Morgan Chase. This is ICBC, the biggest Chinese bank, Bank of America, Wells Fargo. The biggest banks are there. But we have Tencent and Baidu and Financial, which are all today much bigger are much more uh, significantly impacting individuals' lives than, it's, uh, than the banks are doing. Maybe the, you might like to revisit your answer. Is, uh, is it really the way that's happening? Is there really a change in the sector? And unfortunately for us, that is us in the sense the financial sector, sorry, it's, it seems to be happening more uh, really then not. Um, the uh, Clayton Christensen of the Howard has talked about this and I'm sure other, other speakers have talked about disruptive innovation. The, the innovation happening in such a way that the existing players are disrupted. This is, this is not unique to, uh, to my sector. It's not unique to, it is, it is disruptive innovation across let me quickly, in the interest of time, uh, not go through this, but let me, let me get all the slides in place, and we will say this. Initially, the disruptive innovations are below the, below the threshold wherein they cause any disruption. So we say, no, no, they are too small. Today, if you look at it, and I will show you some numbers, you look at our own fintechs, they are too small a number. They are gaining in size, but it happens in a very gradual manner, which Christensen calls the technology mudslide. What does he mean? You know what a mudslide is? It's no, it's not a voting question, but what's it? A technology mudslide is something that you're standing in, you're not aware that uh, things are changing because it's a mudslide. A, a landslide is different, a big rock falls on your head and you know, that's finished. But a mudslide happens slowly, before the incumbents, that is existing players, realize it and the change happens. So we need to be aware of what's, what's happening and, and at that point of time, significant amount of change happens and before you realize it, the change happens. Just, just as a matter of routine, what do we mean by this and why am I talking about it? It means any financial innovation that is technology enabled that's happening in our financial sectors is fintech. And uh, uh, what's, what's most important is that it, it, has, it, it is a portmanteau word, finance, technology, put together, fintech, and that's what we all 
agree uh, as as is, is happening what about india oh, where are the indian fintechs sorry paisabazar.com paytm uh, there are a lot of in indian in uh, you know uh, there are a lot of them are there phone pay they are, they are they are there is the disruption happened has the disruption happened okay let 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 me throw another statistics with you the uh, niti ayog uh, estimated in their recent conference that indian fintechs have raised over 2 billion us dollars worth of financial capital you know they have raised money over 2 billion dollars over the last two years if you see what the banks have raised far far less in fact banks are struggling with capital you know this as a, as a fact there are over 2000 or 3000 fintechs that are registered today as far as venture capital and angel funding is goes fintechs as a category are the biggest sector which gets all great but where is the disruption so um, again quoting niti ayog says that uh, it is estimated that the value of fintech is going to be 31 billion in 2020 is that a lot of money yes it is a lot of money and it is a sector that is growing however this sector if you compare it with it the SBI alone has a value or uh, of 250 billion the most comparable uh, uh, entity to this 31 billion is Bank of Maharashtra you know a small bank in which has not been merged uh, has about 32 billion US dollars worth of uh, business point I'm making yes it is there it is significant but yet not big enough now if you look at this today in China there are two entities WeChat and Ant Financial which is uh, Alipay to each one of them Alipay is the bigger one has about 600 million customers we, WeChat Pay has around 500 million customers put together 1.1 billion users e almost equal if you if we are 1.3 billion as a country almost equal to the size of so my point is 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 there an environment where we see an Indian big fintech which becomes big tech and is regulation doing something about it or not okay here I come to your next question this is the next question where you can use there are only two options here and the question is like this should regulation precede innovation or should innovation precede regulation I have enough number of examples for, for both but I want your opinion on this and I'll, I'll like to see at least Innovation should precede regulation, says this, and I, you know, this is a parliamentary democracy, even 51% is a winner. So, by the way, isn't this music extremely catchy? It was, it was hard for me not to start dancing. <laughs> uh, so, um, okay, let, let's, let's talk about regulation, where in our country we've seen regulation uh, go ahead of innovation. Have you heard of a product called UPI beam right how do you use it so it's it's a formal sector product that has launched you know UPI is uh, yeah we, we, we'd like to pat ourselves on the back I mean NPCI launched it but it was somewhere where we went ahead and we said that this is a innovation and today it's widely recognized as one of the best innovations that that one could come about with this is some an entirely indigenously uh, done product but yeah but the people who uh, voted 
innovation should precede regulation have a point. The first credit cards in India came in the 1980s, 85, 86. The first regulations on credit card came in 2005. By which time the market had matured, you know, allow people to do stuff. If you look at mobile banking, the M-Pesa Kenyan model, which is worldly, worldwide known to be a successful model, thrived in the absence of regulation. Uh, the QR code, which Paytm came about, we didn't know what to do with QR code. We didn't know to regulate it. So it became a technology now which the mainstream has adopted. In each of these cases, innovation has almost always preceded regulation. So then what should we do? Do what you want to do. Why? The moment this guy from RBI, you no, know, I removed my I card. The guy, he comes, he kills innovation. He is not a guy who does innovation. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, bye. <laughs> uh, okay, so, yeah, so I can't do that, right? I have to get my salary this month as well uh, and till I retire. So let, let me try to make a case why we should look at this and why is it, what is it, is there a via media at all and is, is there, a, is there a, a nice way of doing this entire thing? So uh, here we have technology, ching ching, all that, we're doing it. On the other hand, the regulation guys are saying, no, why, don't come in this side. And I'm going to try to find out some middle meeting, meeting ground, if possible. Uh, OK, uh, is there, so let, let me again, uh, let me jump ahead. Oops, 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 oops. OK, uh, so let me try to, we've already talked about this. Are banks inefficient? Quick, quick, no, no voting here, but quick, yes, no, yes, no, yes, uh, yes, banks are inefficient. Why are they inefficient? Because they follow a lot of procedures and process to keep something safe. So uh, is it inefficient? The people who, who uh, advocate alternative mechanisms for going beyond banks, uh, you, you don't have to go too much. You, you see what Don Tapscott and the other people on, on TED have to say about how blockchains will, be, will revolutionize the world. And you know that fact that people believe that it's the common perception. I can't say that. But you can definitely feel that if I have to go and I'm going to a queue, I have to go to a bank branch, I have to do my banking, it means that it's far less efficient and there are uh, so many better ways. Is there a need for regulation at all or how much is practical and whether it's a hype at all? Let, let me quickly go. So why regulations? Uh, market failures. Why, uh, do, uh, you know, are, are we regulating Uber Ola? Are we regulating uh, Amazon Flipkart? Are we, did, did we tell, tell Snapdeal, please close down? No. Who's doing this? The market is doing this. Over a period of time, did we tell Yahoo's search engine is no longer good? Let's all go to Google. No. How did it happen? Market decided. Did we say that, you know, let, let's uh, go to uh, oh, oh, some other, uh, let, let's not touch Facebook. Let's, uh, let's uh, go to, uh, I've even forgotten the name of the earlier ones which we used to have in, in my Orkut, absolutely. MySpace, yeah, okay. Orkut, uh, you know, you started out. Where's the, they are not there. Who decided? Market. So market, if market is the most efficient way of doing things, why not leave everything to the markets? As simple as that. However, when markets fail is the problem. Uh, <clears throat> there is an imperfect comp uh, competition, right? Yeah, there are, the, 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 there, is, there is a huge information asymmetry. Any time you go and you ask a, a bank for a loan, the bank tends to know more about you than you know about the bank. There's an a, a, a information asymmetry. It's not a level playing field. It is, it is something more than that. Uh, yeah, so, oops, oops. Who pays for it? So there's a, there's a, who, who's paying for Nirav Modi? Who's ma paying for all those big things that we are hearing? Who's paying? Yeah, you and I are paying. Yes, uh, it, it's, it, every, 
there is a there is something called a social good the the fact is that it is like a uh, it it is like your medical trials yes that if you innovate if you allow the pharma companies to innovate extremely without any regulations uh, you may ask me are there really any regulation that's a separate topic altogether but generally it's regulated because your health is at stake we cannot allow private enterprise to experiment on certain critical things because the social fallouts of certain uh, aspects are pretty huge so we start regulating these guys uh, <clears throat> financial products are different they, you want, you might know this economics uh, uh, basics or uh, you if you have studied your marketing classes it is there there are search experience and credence goods a search good uh, if if i may just reiterate is is something you search about and find out you are searched out whether the iphone 11 is worth a buy or not you've searched out features uh, uh, number of cameras whether the three eyes looks like what or it does and you've done that research because you can search about it the other things is you will know it only when you experience it it's like 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 the coffee outside the lunch that's uh, that's there in this hotel you have to experience it and then you tell them you know that's a nice really nice place let's go there so it's an experience good however credence are goods which you want to know even after you experience what am i talking about it's like a medical treatment sorry to return to that you go to a doctor he treats you that day you are okay has it had a long term impact on your health you don't know similarly you gone and got a service particular loan product you know that fellows are all charging 20% my bank 5% interest sir or many of these lottery schemes you know you give put money double ho jata hai you know you, extremely you want to know till later so these are products where it is very difficult for a customer to know what he is good at and bad at so these are called and so they need an extremely higher way of looking to it it's linked to the well being of the supplier what do i mean i can give you a paytm wallet i know paytm is ex extremely good no no i'm just taking it as an example paytm wallet is giving you an excellent cash back so you got a paytm wallet you're doing great with it one day paytm says yeah you know i don't want to do this business and moves away so what happens to your money so if a bank fails what happens to your money you don't want that to happen so the importance your importance is that first uh, that the entity it is like this no they say that if you as long as you have uh, uh, in in a lender borrower uh, function uh, function till the time you have not borrowed anything suppose you borrow in fact they tell us in rbi that you take a loan from rbi as soon as possible then rbi will take care of your health because they want the money back so people start praying for you so that's that's the kind of thing your your well being depends on on that um the, i i i already mentioned this we have seen that when bankruptcy happens and we've seen this again and again we've seen this uh, we are seeing this now in india if you have in instances of bankruptcy to get out of that it's far more expensive both socially and for the for the country and it becomes uh, the entire economy goes into a tizzy you know this today we are in this economic slowdown almost partially because of what's happening in the financial sector the financial sector is a leverage when it going is good it will really pick it up when the going is bad it will really pull it down it's that leverage which which actually matters we saw that in 2008 in the united states and the rest of the developed world we are seeing that right now in india financial sector is bad real sector is bad bad news all around so so you know that that we need to uh, avoid happening okay there's a there's a huge they are all systemically con so what do we do try to do we try to look at distributional concerns we try to look at uh, we know that all market of uh, uh, these things are not efficient so we are try to take care of this we say that our customers really rational maybe not we there are there is a whole branch of behavioral economics which says that people don't act rationally if we did act rationally then none of these 419 nigerian scams would be happening people don't act in the moments of greed and fear 
both things they act irrationally we know that uh, and uh, the question comes about do you know what's better for me than myself why don't you let me choose and unfortunately there is a huge segment of, or, uh, of bank customers and financial sector customers who don't know better than themselves so they do things which uh, at best can be described as uh, so there is a race and a race to the bottom let, let, let me all go into financial crisis very fast and we want to ha prevent that to happen uh, a classic case which I have is peer-to-peer -peer lending. Peer-to-peer -peer lending, uh, you know, is a, is a platform that we regulate and they said, please come and regulate us. Why? Because we want that regulator's uh, stamp that people need that as a confidence level. Today, you go into a bank and it doesn't matter. Today, you don't care that banks are merged, banks are uh, demerged as long as they have that name bank in them. Nothing else matters to you. You go and put your money on an unsecured basis. You are okay with 4% return as long as my money is safe. Why do you do that? You do that just because you feel that there is a greater degree of comfort with that. Okay. Um, let me not go into all this. There are a lot of issues uh, which, which we do. Let me directly jump into uh, how do we regulate it. Today, are fintechs regulated in India? No. Why? No. It means that there is no regulation called fintech regulation. There is nothing, there is no uh, circular, no nothing on, uh, on RBI on this. However, we regulate fintechs through three different routes. One of uh, fintechs which work with banks, we, I call them bank tech. Which These are services like, like POS machines, intermediaries, ATMs, switch operators. Lot of integrators work with banks. This is bank techs. We regulate them through the banks. We have a, a, a circular on outsourcing. We say that any material outsourcing that the banks do on their technology products, we reserve the right to inspect them. So this is called bank tech. We regulate them to the bank. Are they directly regulated? No. But through the banks, the bank will have a clause saying that RBI reserves the right to, to come and supervise you. So we regulate them to them. Then we have this whole ecosystem of payment systems. This, these are regulated under the PSS Act 2007. RBI is the designated authority again under that, where we allow uh, different classes of payment systems to come about. We license them, we inspect them, we take returns, we, we actually ensure that they're doing a good job. So there, there, are, there are things which are regulated and which they are not regulated. Uh, they, you know, that's, that's, that's something later. Finally, we have this new uh, category, which is called fintechs in uh, non-banking. I have some slide on what payment systems are, how they actually operate, where is it that RBI comes in, where is it that RBI does not come in, but this I don't want to go into the slide in great detail because it's, it's time intensive. Okay, now that everything is up, you, these red circles are you all, customers. We are making payments against goods and services on and on. This is payments. Behind this payments are so many products, they are all issued by either RBI or NPCI or some entity that we allow them to introduce. B1, B2, B3 are the banks. They could be non-banks as well. And this is the payment system. However, there's a PSS Act, Payment and Settlement System. Settlements is the settlement of funds. So every transaction that you do on a UPI, on your IMPS, on your cards, has a payment system, but it also has a settlement system. That settlement system all ties up to RBI. So, while this is deregulated, that is regulated. You know, it's a banks only club. Settlement where your funds are involved is, is a banks only club, okay? Uh, let me, and then, the, so we have uh, in, in non-banks, we have P2P lending, we have account aggregators and app-based three categories of non-banks which we regulate. Finally, how do we do this? What's the via media? we have something called a regulatory sandbox. A sandbox here is a kid's play area. So if you are a new innovator, you want to do something, but you think that the regulatory knots are too heavy for you, we invite you to come and join the sandbox. The innovator can come in, we give them regulatory exemptions as much as permissible in the law, they can come and do as much as they wish, and they can actually come out with new products. So here is, on one hand, regulation, light regulation, if you will. We give you this play box. 
this please come here this sandbox is is a place where you don't hurt yourself you don't hurt customers and at the same time financial innovation can happen this is what we uh, which, this is the this is the micro detail of that uh, we are allowed it on all these uh, sectors we have we don't allow we don't require you to have liquidity board composition management experience all this is not required all you need to come is with a particular application to rbi and we'll let you happen oh okay so this is what we're going to do we are going to look at reg tech sub tech etc etc this is this is this is again something that i am done on time <laughs> do i get time for questions or okay any questions uh, to one of uh, your questions response 63% responded that innovation preceded by the regulation. So uh, I would like to know if uh, RBI has any plans to introduce uh, the new cryptocurrency that is emerging in the market as an innovation and are there any regulations that are being made to enter that into Indian market? Anyhow, uh, I don't think in, in the opinion of the government uh, it, has been, it has been examined by an inter-ministerial group. They said that it's not yet, both the technology is not mature nor is it the use cases are not mature. So, um, so right now, cryptocurrency is off the block as far as this, any kind of innovation or the regulatory sandboxes is, is right now there. Yeah. It's, it's already there, right? So what is NEFT? So I said payment system, 24 hours, no problem. Today you have IMPS, 24 by 7, right? No, no problem. Uh, NEFT is a higher value. So typically I can transfer 500 crores through NEFT. Okay. We have extended the hours. Uh, and it is, it is possibly now going to be available to you till 10 o'clock in the night. However, what is the system behind it? You have, to, the bank has to provide a fund. The settlement system is the problem because we typically banks tend to use uh, without going too much into technical, they have collateral based lending to one another. So it's a, uh, so your bank has to pay my bank before a particular time of uh, period of time. So NEFT has, was barred till such time the financial markets were open. Now there is an uh, increasing demand. The government uh, has also felt that why don't you increase it? And so we are, we are going to increase it. So uh, NEFT 2.0 would, would possibly have a wider window, maybe to 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. But really, in my opinion, uh, small value transactions up to 2 lakhs are taken care of by IMPS. Large value transactions are taken by RTGS. NEFT is very popular, so we are not able to discontinue it. But it's basically a sandwich product. So we will see some changes there. But it's not, uh, uh, yeah. So, sir, you mentioned that um, you provide a regulatory sandbox for innovators in fintech. Uh, what about the rights? Uh, what about the intellectual property rights to all the developers? Uh, do you also grant um, protection saying that, you know, for anything that could be potential patent or a trademark, we would grant you um, some level of security so that other people do not take away those rights? Okay, so when you come to uh, to the regulate, these these are the final uh, nuances which I didn't talk about. When you come to this, you come with a product which is entirely yours. So uh, what you have is uh, you know uh, it's not ac actually explicitly stated, but uh, you know we, we could we could uh, definitely look at the IPR of that as well. So that's it's it is it is a given that only you are permitted and nobody else is permitted to use that. So nobody else with that same product comes on to this. So it's a unique uh, thing, but. Uh, you know, it's 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 something that's not very explicitly mentioned as that this protect uh, this is a uh, IPR that is protected. But I, I guess that could be that would definitely be within the ambit of what we are looking at. It's the guidelines are about maybe two months old. We have just you know started getting applicants, so it's it's very nascent yet. So if a if a innovator comes and says, look, this is a this is a absolutely innovative product. I don't want other guys to copy me. I think that would be definitely protected. We would, we would take care of that. And it's like this. Everything has an inter, en, entry barrier. So if you have a, uh, if you put in, uh, uh, nothing gets into the financial sector without licensing. So that, that is a very strong barrier where we can prevent things, you know, copycats from coming in. Uh, yeah. 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 Pick up your voting pads. 
uh, and uh, the questions are on the screen right away. One more idea. 